Welcome in the Sanctuary of Divine Mercy in Krakow, Poland. Uh, my name is Sister Gaudia and I'm one of the sisters from the Congregation of Our Lady of Mercy. We are in a very, very special place, the Sanctuary of Divine Mercy, the place that John Paul II called the capital of Divine Mercy devotion. I came, and now you with me, to the place where all began. Uh, what, you will ask? Well, St. Faustina's story the revelations that she received from, from God himself and the mission that she received. He told her, I'm sending you to the whole humanity with my mercy. You are to encourage all of them to trust in me and to be merciful to each other. Feel that now you are at the very source of it. In 1931, a first revelation connected with Sister Faustina's mission uh, takes place. In 1931, she sees Jesus like we can see him now on the image of merciful Jesus. So this Jesus with the lifted hand, the other on his chest and two rays emanating from his heart. Uh, image that you can now find in each and every corner of the world. Uh, but what's the source of it? What's the significance and what's the mission that, it, that this image has to fulfill? Jesus says, uh, practice mercy by deeds words and prayers. This is what you can do always. If you cannot do something, like a real deed, act of mercy, you can always say a good word, a comforting word, something that will help that person to see that um, you care, that God cares. Yes, Through you, God wants to tell someone being in pain that he cares, that there is hope. So, if not a deed of mercy, then it can be a word, a merciful word. Sometimes, of course, there are such situations that we are unable even to say a good word. So what's then? We can always pray. We can always pray. Uh, Jesus said to Faustina, you can never excuse yourself saying, Oh God, I'm sorry, in that situation I couldn't do anything. Yes, you could. You can always pray. So once again, Faustina has the revelation of merciful Jesus in 1931. Uh, she sees him in her room, just like we are right now in the replica of her room. So imagine in such little place, uh, very intimate, private, she entered her room on Sunday evening and there she saw the merciful Lord. Uh, and he told her, paint an image according to this what you see. I want this image to be venerated first in your chapel and then all over the world. I will give many graces to the people through that image. Therefore, so let each soul have an access to that image. So when you look at the image of merciful Jesus, you see that there is an inscription, a signature. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus repeated a few times, I want the signature, there must be the signature. Jesus, I trust in you.
First Sister Faustina, Jesus uh, wants to remind us that He is the God of mercy. And uh, again, He reminded, look uh, at your history, what happened. Uh, the greatest proof of His mercy, for sure, is that He simply gave His life for us. And uh, He said even to Faustina that if my death on the cross didn't convince them about my love, so what will? Through Sister Faustina, Jesus is not telling us anything new. He is simply reminding the old biblical truth uh, about his extreme love, uh, shown in a special way in the, the sacrifice of the cross. That's why the whole Divine Mercy devotion is focused on, on His Passion. I'm sure that uh, the majority of you, uh, you pray already with the words of the chaplet uh, of the Divine Mercy. And you repeat these words, Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. And then we repeat again and again, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Really, there is nothing more that we can offer to God. But a moment will come, a moment of naked truth, when everything will be clear for us. And what's then? To run away like Adam and Eve in paradise? To pretend it's not my fault, it's his fault? Um, no. Uh, and that's why Jesus says, I simply want you to trust in my mercy, in my goodness. Because as he said to Sister Faustina, uh, I do not want to punish aching humankind. humankind, his wounded children, this is whom he sees looking at us, even at the greatest criminals, he sees wounded children and he says, I do not want to punish, but I want to heal them, pressing them to my merciful heart and to show them mercy. Uh, Sister Faustina, Helena Kowalska, uh, she was born in 1905 and she entered the congregation at the age of 20, that was 1925, mm -hmm. and she came to Krakow in 1926. Uh, this then, already uh, being just a very young sister, uh, she started an extraordinary life where well, Jesus started to give her some special gifts. mission to reach the whole humanity. Jesus told us that real mercy has its source in my relation to him, so in my love to God. There is no mercy without that. He told her, I'm sending you to the whole humanity with my mercy. You are to encourage all of them to trust in me and to be merciful to each other. I want to give my mercy to the world. I'm, my heart is overflowing with mercy. truly cares about each single beating of our heart and he's waiting for that moment when this heart will start beating for him.
Faustina, being in Krakow, more or less six years of her religious life, uh, she was writing here her diary. The majority, the biggest part of her diary is written here in Krakow. Uh, that's a black pearl among many mystical books. Uh, amazing, amazing testimony, amazing dialogue between man, human being and God. how she was being prepared to start her mission and then what are Jesus' uh, wishes for us. Uh, what's important to realize, Jesus told her that I'm giving you a message for the whole humanity and that message will prepare the world for my final coming. Uh, so we are now living in a time of mercy, this is what he says. Now I'm giving the humanity the time of mercy before the day of judgment, before I will come again. Uh, I do not want them to be uh, afraid of that. I do not want them to live in fear. I want them to trust. While being here and while meeting with the millions of pilgrims, there are more or less two millions on a yearly basis coming to Krakow from 90 countries, we see that the major problem of people nowadays is a wrong image of God. And this is really something that already Jesus said to Faustina, many people have a wrong image of me. So now, through Faustina, through the revelations given to her, he reminds us who he really is. Who, who is he? Hello, my name's Merv Astle. Uh, I'm from Lincoln in England. Uh, I'm here with my wife Marion. It's our third visit to, to Krakow, and as a Catholic convert, uh, a conversion that's not as been easy as I would have liked in my case, I, I have come here and each time my spirituality has improved. Um, in particular, this time I feel a closeness to Jesus that I had never experienced before. Hello, my name's Noreen Bavister. I'm from the United Kingdom and I came to Poland for the sixth year running with a group of pilgrims from the United Kingdom. Last year we had people from Australia, Africa, America and many different European countries. And the reason I've brought people to experience this Divine Mercy Shrine is because when I came here six years ago, my life changed forever. Many people have been healed spiritually, emotionally, in the mind, body and soul. And many people have received the grace of God's mercy and it's really moved them and touched them for, forever. Uh, I feel that this week, uh, the Lord has shown his mercy to me in many ways, especially there was two particular incidents in the restaurant when poor people come in to the restaurant and I felt particularly drawn towards them and I felt the Lord working through them towards me and in my mercy towards them, the mercy from Jesus. I opened my heart to them in a special way and I felt very emotional and the whole pilgrimage has been very filling with mercy, love, peace and harmony. Thank you. Real mercy is that strength to, to search for good in a, each human being, for good and beauty in each human being even if that beauty is hidden under many layers of all that's bad, ugly and evil. Faustina was a person really united with God and for her seeing Jesus was not connected just with one place, 
um, God appeared to her and uh, gave her many revelations, wherever she was, but for sure many of them took place in the old convent chapel, the heart of the shrine, where now are her relics. Uh, and we are now in a special place where she saw Jesus as well. Why it's so special? Because that's the only time when she didn't recognize him. So she was working as a doorkeeper and uh, many poor people were coming to the gate asking for something to eat and she was simply bringing them the soup. And again, uh, one day Jesus came under the guise of a poor young man. She didn't know it was God himself and he simply asked for a soup. So she brought him the soup. transforms and so she sees it, it's the God of heaven and earth uh, and then he vanishes. Later Jesus told her that um, he heard from those beggars coming to the convent gate on a daily basis how they were praising the Lord for the mercy that they experienced from that simple sister and that's why he left the throne of heaven to taste the fruits of her mercy. Here in the sanctuary you have uh, many votive donations. Uh, people are bringing many times their jewelry usually uh, as a proof, as a thanksgiving uh, to God. Uh, for the graces that they received and uh, I could tell you many stories of, of miracles that happened here um, but something that uh, very much touched my heart uh, is a story of uh, a girl who was um, a student, she was studying in Krakow and uh, because she was a very good student she received a scholarship to United States for one semester she came here to the sanctuary to, to pray in front of the miraculous image of mercy for Jesus before she left. Unfortunately, after more or less two months of her life uh, in the United States, she had a terrible car accident. Um, and in that car accident, her head was crushed. The doctors called the parents, uh, the family in Poland. So her mother uh, came quickly to the United States, but before, uh, before she left the United States, she came uh, as well to that sanctuary to pray in front of the miraculous image of merciful Jesus. When she reached the hospital, she simply hanged that image over the bed of, uh, of her daughter and uh, she prayed. She prayed fervently. Um, after two weeks, more or less, uh, suddenly on that equipment that's usually at the bedside of someone who's uh, in coma, something started to change. The doctors came and they all started to discuss, uh, wondering what's happening. And that poor mother, sitting at the bedside, she couldn't understand a word, she was not speaking English. And in that moment of fear, she suddenly heard uh, words in Polish, uh, Mommy, do not be afraid, I will translate for you. So uh, it was her daughter, Magda, uh, wake, wake, woken up from coma. And the half of brain that she lost in that accident was that half responsible for the gift of speech. And till now, she is able to speak Polish and English. So for God, really nothing is impossible.
another part of Faustina's diary we can find Jesus' words saying that even the greatest sinners could become great saints if they only trust in my mercy. So this is the simple logic. Uh, we are called to trust that for him nothing is impossible and he's willing to forgive the greatest sins uh, if we only admit that there is something to forgive. Hello.